Oh no, I got an idea. Hey, I got an idea. <laughs> Hello. Hey, it's uh, Sunday. Whoa, guitar and coffee time. I got a little bit left here. I kind of gave up coffee. Maybe just I'll have it on Sundays and do a little live stream if I can uh, get it together. So I played in uh, Indianola last night, Indianola, Iowa. It's south of Des Moines. So I had to go pick up Trevor in Ankeny, then go to uh, Indianola, do uh, two hours and load up. And anyway, I got I left about 2 p.m. and got back about 2 a.m. Uh, but it was really, really fun. Everything went well. I'm thinking uh, working on a little chord progression. This is, you know me, I like to keep it kind of simple. We can always add a whole bunch of stuff to this. But let's try E. I'm going to keep tuning this thing. This guitar's been sitting unplayed for a few years. That sounds like garbage. A, D, and G. And that's it. E, A. I'm going to build some stuff here. D, G. I think it needs the nut slots filed down. They're kind of high. All right. I'm going to do that with a little bit of timing. 74 beats a minute. Four. Uh, let's do whole notes. Two, three, four, A. Two, three, four, D. Two. You should be able to do that comfortably. E, two, three, four, A. I'm just practicing. D, two. We're going to add all kinds of stuff to this. Just making sure everybody can play in time. Play a chord progression. Focus on a chord progression. D and G. Now let's try half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're doing chords. Hi. Let's do it again. Half notes. Two quarter notes. Those chords sound a little sour, don't they? Quarter notes. Now I'm going to do bass note, something like this. Bass and alternate. So my thumb does the bass notes. Thumbs hitting the bass. I do a strum with my nails and then hit the alternate bass note with my thumb, like this bass. For the E. For the A. For the D and. I'm going to lay down a little beat with that. I'm going to try to get a little faster. Like. down up with my index thumb down up 
let's try that again. Uh, I'm going to take it down to 125. Two, ready, go. <laughs> So, I am mounting my fingers on the face of the guitar here. Middle and ring are sitting on the pick guard. And that and my forearm is on this corner just in case you're wondering. And uh that stabilizes my right hand so I can that my thumb can consistently hit the bass note and my index can consistently do the down up. All right. I'm going to do a little more of that. One, two, here we go. pretty fun. I was going to get into some picking like that would represent those chords. So I'm doing like this, the third of an E chord. This is the flat, this is the flat of seven. That's what makes an E7 chord, the third, the root, and the, wait a minute. Yeah, the third, the root, the flat and seventh, and the fifth. So it's, that's where I'm getting my idea for the lick. I'm skipping the B, that's the fifth, we don't need that. So that works as an E7. So that will work on the E chord. That works as an E7 uh, lick idea. All right, check out the A7. That works because A7 is made of A, C sharp, E, and G. So here we have G, E, and C sharp. The flatted seventh, the fifth, and the third. So E7, 4030, 4030, A7, down one fret, 30203, 3020, tongue twisters. Now uh, D7, here we're going to make it a D9 because we've got a uh, third, a second, and a flatted seven. So a D9 has got uh, a root, third, flat seven, fifth. So we're just using the third. The, did I mention the ninth? Yeah, the ninth or second. So uh, third, second, flat at seven, F sharp, E, C. So in order. And for G, I'm just going to go. which is G, E, D, E, which will give us like a G6. Close enough. I mean, just because the geometry is cool. I wonder if I can do that at a tempo. So I'm thinking about the reason I think this is good practice. I'm not just noodling on a scale. I'm thinking about chord progressions, and I'm thinking about keys and, uh, you know, timing. So let's take that down to a comfortable 77, see how that lick goes. Two, three, four. And the A7. D9. And G. <laughs> so 
So if we speed that up, maybe do pull-offs. That sounds pretty good. So that was that tempo was up there a little bit. Let's try 148. That was pretty fast. Uh, 148 was a little scary, but uh, that's how you generate a lick, I, in, at least in my mind. Um, so that's an interesting way to play over the chords. I mean, if we said play a scale, you might, uh, we might, there might be some stumbling there. I don't know what scale you would play over. You have to kind of change your licks as the chords change. And uh, there's some other hot spots up the neck <clears throat> for that E7. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do it. E7, A7, D7, and G, something like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there that's really cool. That would be based on like a, a C-shaped E7. Or you could just do kind of roll on those a few notes in that chord. So that's like a C shape where you add your pinky to make the dominant seven. And the A7 um, could be, you can, let's even simplify it. Check this out. I'm going to, I'm going to do away with the big shapes and, and kind of boil it down to something small. It's going to be so easy because I'm just going to leave these two fingers in the shape. E7, A9, kind of a D6, 9, and a G6 same shape you get some kind of fancy chords in there with the open strings so that's a trick you know and it's easy so that's that's all i really try to do is something manageable <laughs> that sounds reasonably cool so you know without straining myself that's just a six and a seven six fret fourth string, seventh fret, third string. I'm using thumb, index, middle, and ring to roll, kind of a banjo roll. I'm going to move this music stand so you can see the kitty. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm coming back. Never mind that garbage. Ah, Luna. So I'm playing with an echoplex. To a Marshall JCM 800. Let's add some more blend in there. So here's that lick again. Hey, Luke. Howdy. Yeah. The Sambongo Dragon. Got away from me. I'm going to take it down from 148. So again, I'm practicing with a chord progression with timing, which is better than, I mean, I like to free, you know, I like to free, free time it. There was the same chords, uh, but, you know, not with timing. I'm still thinking chord progression. So two things we're trying to do, chord progressions and timing. So I'm going to take that down. The previous lick, just in case you're joining us, I'm working over E, A, D, and G, repeating chords. And I'm just coming up with some different licks. I'm going to try this little guy here. Uh, That's 
just cool. So that was uh, 132 beats a minute. And it shows you those lines. You could go. <laughs> would give you, that sounded wicked. That was the E. Because that's the dominant seventh of E, the major third of A, the dominant seventh of D, the major third of G. It's weird how they shift, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, identities or roles as you just move down the neck in a chromatic line. The other string, let's see what that is. You got your third of E, the flatted seventh of A, the third of D, and the flatted seventh of G, if you did, you know. And the open strings just give you different extensions on each chord. Let's do the chords one more time. Two, three, four. Thanks, man. Breezy moon. <laughs> well, that's pretty happy sounding. I don't know the freezing moon. Um, so you could do, when you get to that uh, G, you could do a, if you're looking for something to add. G, G flat, F, E. It's like falling down the stairs. Cool thing about a Telecaster is your volume control right here. You get a whole bunch of different tones just by rolling your pinky. It's really easy to control that. You shouldn't have to go, whoa. You should just be able to roll it, I think. Or whatever. And you flip your switch. This here is gets you your bridge pickup, both pickups, and the neck pickup. Yeah, and here's your tone. So you can take some of that... Uh, you can take some of that. Uh, thanks, man. You can take some of the brightness out. <laughs> yeah, the fretboard on this guitar is, uh, this was a Fender uh, Road Worn series from 2012, made in Mexico. And they um, they kind of sanded it out or down at the factory. But it's a nitro cell finish, which is really cool. It's like a vintage Fender from the 50s, only it's not, uh, I don't know. 20 30 40 thousand dollars whatever <laughs> it's just a hunk of wood man it's pretty cool so uh yeah i'm just uh trying to show people a simple simple chord progression e a d g i was doing you could do more grab some roots yikes this has some kind of high action i gotta attend to that Get some kind of Chet Atkins flavored. Or you could do cowboy chords and do some kind of rockabilly Travis picking business. You could play a lick off of each chord. So, in case you're just joining us, I'm doing E A D G. There was an E arpeggio that was kind of cool, or E7, A7. Let's see how what I do there. 
D7 uh, and G7. If you could play those really fast, it'd be cool. But so that would be now again, I'm trying to practice using a distinct chord progression and timing. But here, I don't really have a timing plan for that free ranging, free, free form uh, arpeggio study I just did. Um, you know what arpeggios are, are the notes of e, of the chord played one at a time. And you don't have to just stay here in the shape for an E7. You can uh, splatter it way up the neck. Like e, here's an E7 on the fat string. So it kind of sounds like a bass line. That's, that was funny. That's an arpeggio. And I, I think that sounded cool. That's a root, a third, a fifth, a flatted seven, D, and an E. So D, remember on E, the seventh is a flatted seven. E7, I mean, I'm sorry. E7 chord has a D in it. That's a dominant seventh or flatted seventh. Here's a major seven. You got to know the difference. Check out major seven. That's major seven or like this. Hear the difference? This is dominant seventh. Big difference, right? Okay, cool. So I was doing, you know, you could play an arpeggio on each chord. Each chord is going to have an arpeggio. So know that E7 is made of E, B, or excuse me, E, G sharp, B, D, E. That's cool. Sounds cool with the slap back. I love that slap back. So I'm going to bounce it off the first string. See what I'm doing there? Oops. I'm going to bounce this. Yikes. All right. <laughs> so that's just one string of an E7 arpeggio. Remember, those notes are all over the neck. You got to find E, G sharp, B, D. That's the whole chord. And you can add an E here. There's the same riff I was doing. Instead of going, you know, it's kind of silly to go up on one string other than it's kind of fun. But if I go. I'm doing like. That E on the second fret. With. The arpeggio E G sharp B D E D B G sharp. You got to think about those things. Of course, you could take it over to A. Just this is what's fun about this is how guitar works. It's shapes. If you if you know that shape. You, you know, you go one string over, you got your A. So that's really, that's that's as easy as it's going to get on guitar, E to A. Uh, uh, some sort of a riff. Like. And maybe D. But in this case, we're going to go E, A, well, D. Let's see if that'll work. Oops. Maybe D. I could do something on a D. I just got it. I like these because they're flat. And flat D is kind of a little triangle shape. So you got to modify your shape. 
Anyhow, that's just one way to do the arpeggios. Otherwise, you kind of got to grind it out on each each arpeggio, E7. Find all those shapes all over the neck. You know, just pick your shapes. You'll find them. You just got, here's the G sharp, B, and the D. It looks kind of comfortable, doesn't it? But, uh, <laughs> or you could just do little guys like this. Or like this. Oops, that's a D7. Or up here. Woo! Uh-oh. That's a G or a D, G sharp, and B. No root. So you can find them up there, you know, all over. Yes, yeah, your job is to find all the notes of an E7 chord of the neck. If you want to really understand how to play over an E7 chord. All right, so I realize I'm asking more questions. I'm uh, making more mysteries than I'm solving them, but it's, you know, these are things I chase down. Um, you got your E7 arpeggio, A7 arpeggio, D7 arpeggio, G7 arpeggio. I mean, it's, it's a starting point to find uh, some licks. If you, you know, I, first I want to know at least what chords I'm playing over, and then what are the notes of the chord, then maybe I can uh, mold that into something that sounds cool. So, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what else we could do with that, but maybe this, E7. What's a good G7 right here? I don't see one I like. E7. A7. Here's one, G7. Wait a minute. I want D7. That's why it didn't sound right. Here's D7 and G7. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yikes. So it's just kind of exploring and learning. Um. The major chords, yes. I like E minor pentatonic. thinking major so that's cool you can you can mix them sometimes if you know how you're doing it uh but i'm i'm trying to stay all major on this little drill but yeah that's cool that you know that yeah just learn if you're just getting started with this all i'm the way i started today if you, i don't know if you saw i just started with the e chord go to a chord go to d chord and go to g chord so start there and then i like to do you know, some timing with that, maybe. Kind of relax. I'm, I'm going back to something simple. I love 77 beats a minute. I'm going to do whole notes with those chords. Two, three, four. Two, four. Two. Yeah. Then we can do half notes. One, two. Oops, those are quarter notes. Well, I guess those are fast. I don't know. One, two. Three, four. I spaced out. Three, four. Can you see the kitty? Where is she? No, I guess you can't. I'll move the camera, maybe. There she is. Again, here's E, E, A, A, D. I 
like that Hey Yeah song. Sorry, I didn't play it. But <laughs> then quarter notes. One, two. All right, I'm going to pause that. Check. No. Allow me to tune my guitar. I'm going to get it perfectly in tune and try to demonstrate something that's kind of cool to know about. Let's see. I'll get this. You can see my strobe tuner. I'm doing it in the camera, so it's opposite. So if I squeeze too hard, thank you for letting me do that. If I l listen to the E, I'm going to squeeze light. It sounds it sounds pretty in tune. Now I'm going to squeeze hard with my fretting hand. Check it out. Hear how ugly that is? Watch the third string on the tuner. I've actually got a G sharp going there. So if you squeeze too hard, you're going to make it sharp. Watch the fourth string. I'm going to squeeze hard. That's almost an F. It flashed to F. Fifth string, I'm going to squeeze too hard. That made it a C. I can bend a half step sharp if I squeeze too hard on the chord. And uh, <laughs> that used to drive me crazy when I was a teen, a teenage, uh, try, you know, practicing as a teenage rock and roller, I would tune my guitar to one chord, and I knew you're supposed to press hard, and I must have been tense, and I kept squeezing harder and harder and tuning by ear to that chord. I go to the next chord, it'd be drastically different. And then I go to, I tune it to that chord, then I go back maybe to another chord, and that would be drastically different. So I tune to that chord, and it would be just all screwy. And I get madder and madder and squeeze harder and harder. The more I got mad, the harder I squeezed, the more I went out of tune. So relaxing your fretting arm a little bit in your hands. You don't want to squeeze so hard, is all I'm saying. Make sure you're on your fingertips when you hit a string. Try to arch your fingers up. Don't lay them flat. And uh, you'll notice my thumb kind of hangs over the top because I grab and mute notes on that sixth string. I might grab them or mute the fifth string or maybe mute the fourth string. So to me, that's easy. You might have your thumb more back here like most teachers will push you back here uh i got one guy that shoots his thumb way up in the sky and uh, one student but uh, that's just some stuff so yeah i'm just hanging out today sunday guitar and coffee and it's fun 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 i've been listening to this jeff beck rock and roll party cd where he played a tribute to uh les paul at the Iridium Club in New York City. And he, wow, it's just wonderful. Really great singing and playing and a bunch of guests. Brian Setzer jumps in. Um, a lady sings a bunch of the uh, Mary Ford stuff. And uh, it's Jeff Beck does some licks there like. Uh, he does some. That's a cool chord you can learn. Yeah, Jeff Beck died, man. It's terrible. Um, here's a chord that Jeff used and other cool people. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he stole it from somebody great, but it's like a 6-9 for this kind of swingy, jazzy feel. Wow. That is fun. That's a G6-9. If I do it down here... Uh, so that makes a lick if you take that chord, slide it up, and bring it down. That's like a three, three, two, two, two. Yeah, it sucks, man. I was really upset. I woke up one morning and watched a bunch of Jeff Beck videos laying in bed. I just couldn't get out of bed. I was just like, oh. 
I don't know. I guess you just have to be thankful that we had him. And, you know, with any loss, you know, we lose so many people all the time. It's just more than you can humanly keep track of or process. But I guess it's the price you pay for knowing so many cool people. And uh, it does hurt. It really. I, I have a, a, a this, I, if something is really screwed up, I try to say, hey, man, it's not my fault. <laughs> I don't I can't blame myself and internalize it so much. But, yeah, it just tears you up inside. So that chord is like a 6-9. Uh, it's a 3-3-2-2-2. Three, three, two, two, two. And you could put a root on it. Wow, that don't sound bad. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, that's a G B E A D G three, two, 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 three, three. You could just do those two plus plus that plus just take them in little pieces. Oops, that sounded kind of weird. I like it. That's a whole world of uh, possibilities within that chord. You could build licks off of that. I'm just doing, I'm kind of snapping my fingers. I'm kind of hooking them. Like, I'm using, I use thumb and index to kind of tweeze them. I just sort of pinch them and pull. Plus, I've got this slap back effect. Hear that echo? That's kind of adding. Sounds like those weird bugs that hide in trees and summer nights and and sing really loud. <laughs> so within that chord, you can hear those possibilities of kind of rockabilly. So yeah, I'm just squeezing them and pulling them. See, In thumb and index, and I just move over two strings. Or you can kind of bounce thumb, index, thumb, index, and kind of get this, like, uh, it sounds like a ping pong ball. It's like, bugga, 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 bugga. I'm going thumb and index on the A string. It's kind of like Johnny Cash, you know. Only. Wow, that's possible. That's got some possibilities. <laughs> Ugh, that's a little, I'm stumbling, but whatever. It's kind of bicka, 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 bicka. But there, <laughs> that was pretty aggressive. But that, that delay is so bouncy, you know, so. I'm kind of, you know, ripping on the big string. Yeah, slap bass. Like. Everybody should know bass runs. I mean, yeah. Bucka, 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 bucka. I'm kind of bouncing off this. You should be able to just pull those out of the sky with that. Everybody's heard. Or even. Guess what that is? E arpeggio, root third, fifth. Bum, 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 bum. Sounds like a tuba, you know. Bum, 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 bum. Sounds really like, you know, ultra basic. That's where the good stuff is. So to make that weird picking style work, remember my right arm is really stable. I'm not floating. I'm not doing this. I'm locked in here, locked in here, locked in here. See these fingers on the pick guard? Maybe ring and pinky can bounce. It's just stable, you know, so I'm really kind of controlling the guitar with my right hand. I can even, you know, I don't need a strap because I'm kind of locked in on that bridge. I'm not really that tense when I'm playing, but 
my hand is stationed there pretty hard. That was chromatic where I did just about every note. So you can throw that six nine chord on there. I was doing G. Now I'm on E. So I'm kind of, you know, blasting out my fingers to and it's my fingernails that are raking across the strings. And then I come up so that the fingernails are doing the hard. That's a hard surface. So it has like a percussive effect when I snap my fingers out. And when I come up, uh, it's the soft part hitting the string. So you kind of get a. You just get a little contrast. So it's, you know, nail. If you could do all nails, that would be good. But the soft part does sound different. So it's kind of doing that, uh, what's his name? Travis style picking, which I don't really do it correctly. <laughs> my eyes keep rolling back in my head. So I'm just kind of like uh, weasel worming my way through that, you know, just sort of tickling the strings. I love that boom, 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 boom. See that, hear the bass boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's a, like, like an A9. There's that thumb coming over the top. And pretty simple. It's a thumb. So it's a G, G, no, A, G, C sharp, B, E. That, that drives a lot of people nuts, that thumb thing. But to me, it's just like, boom, you're right there. It's just like, it's a place to hang my arm. It's a hook. I'm just hanging my arm. And it just supports my uh, fretting hand. I don't want to just hold my arm up there. That's just like, man, no way. That's too hard. Yeah. Delicate fingering. Yeah, you can do it without the thumb thing. I, it does bother a lot of people. Um, yeah, I think you can go. You can probably do. I'll, I'll try to get my thumb in proper. You know, I'll disguise my thumb. Hide it. You can just go an A seven bar chord. How's that work? Just a squeeze on the back. That might be. That'd be plenty good. We could do D7 like at the fifth fret, you know, make an A7 shape here. Root is and squeezing on the back of the neck. So that could be good. You could do different, you know, just find a different E7.
good idea. So that gives you a different sound if, you, if you're not, you know, Mr. Thumb. Good, good, good. Wow. You could even do them. Though that doesn't need thumb, this sort of a. Yeah, you know, I think it's flexibility versus I'm a I'm I'm about four feet tall. I've got little teeny baby hands, little tiny baby hands. So <laughs> there's no way that I don't I feel it's more I've just been doing this for like 40 or 50 years and you know i got old without my hands getting um stiff my uh core is stiff and my legs are stiff but uh, my hands are pretty flexible so i think it's mostly flexibility for most people that's my feeling but yeah i just did a different like it uh here's a e7 here's a root then make a d7 you know d7 here Take that up here, oops, and then uh, use different fingers. You got your D7 shape. That's like an E, B, D, G sharp. So there you don't need your thumb. Yeah, Hendrix had some hands, though. But, you know, a guitar neck, I used to think a guitar neck was about as big as a football field, but, you know, like a vast universe of unknowable mysteries but and it kind of is but no it's the neck is pretty small it's just a little little piece of wood uh so i don't know that's my take on it but i get it uh if i had to argue that's what i'd say Ooh, if you're interested in that thumb over thing try a d chord with your thumb on the bass that's a really common one like like okay I was I was fighting with some people online already today. No, we're just debating debating requests from the audience, just discussing it. Nobody's fighting on my page. About request, we're talking about requests. about a d with an f sharp that's a funny there's a request all right all right that sometimes we get all right so i'm kind of going gonzo with this um e sub e a d g chord progression that's my plan for this little uh oh, that's cool you got her there you go yeah if you can just at least get that big string you're good um uh, I don't even think about it, but uh, I'll just see if that is worthy of doing anything, but I don't think so right now. So, yeah, I was just kind of having fun doing that uh, Travis picking. Way to kind of simplify that might be just going, you know, on your E chord, but just add, hi, Gary. I'm just doing thumb. I don't know if you can see that okay, but uh, I'm going thumb, index, middle, ring on the third, second, and first strings. Three fingers hitting three strings. I'm trying to get on the underside of my fingers, not sideways i'm not clawing them or ripping them or popping them or pushing them sometimes people will try digging their fingers and push out that's kind of fun but no we want to go just a natural like pull up try some angles Thank you. 
that's your E. Now, again, the idea is to practice in time, but um, I'm kind of going free, free time, but just to show you what it is, the A would be a... So I got bass, an alternate, holding the A chord here, and just the same three strings with three fingers. Oops. Ah, then a D chord. Bass note is D. Alternate is the A string. Then the G chord, make a... When you go from D to G, remember to keep your ring finger in place. You don't have to pick up your fingers. Always keep the ring in place. Go from D to G. And watch my pinky. D, G. So pinky just kind of lifts. G, it just goes down. The other two fingers just sort of D, G, D, G. All right. So G, what? Uh, bass, alternate, bass, alternate. Now, the idea that I'm trying to keep coming back to is that we practice with timing. I'm going to go kind of slow. Yeah. So that tempo wasn't crazy. That was 77. That was gentle. You know, we weren't going all super psycho, psycho Billy yet. But uh, let's just take her on up to like 100. Two, three, four. Yikes. Ah. It's getting away from me. Yikes. So to keep that really manicured and keep every note perfect as far as volume, attack, tone, timing, you know, you don't want one note buried and one note popping out loud. So I was having a little trouble making that perfect. Yeah, the Road Worn, man. This one was in my video that they got pretty, uh, a lot, like 112,000 views. That's my best video. And I had, I used this telly. Yeah, I love this thing. So that was finger picking at 101 beats a minute. Oh, boy. So if I go, I'm kind of wary about going faster, but let's try it. 110. Yeah, that was pretty, you know, 110 was not so bad. Yeah, the, you know, if they're too bright or too orange, I don't want, I don't want them to be really orange. You know, they look strange. So this is yellow enough and maybe it will fade a little bit, get a little more kind of like scuzzy over time, but it's a 2012. So I guess it's getting older, but I used to play this at gigs and people thought it was a, you know, a real fifties telly. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's take let's go up to uh 120. Finger picking. Here I go. Oh boy, that was a little difficult. So I'm feeling like one of my problems when I'm playing is that I tend to lighten up too much and I need to be driving the song. I'm too light with my picking and strumming because I'm trying to be polite and I probably play around the house so much. I try not to be, you know, banging on my guitar like a maniac. I just play softly around the house. I'm in a big habit of that. So when I'm playing with surf zombies, the guys are always like wondering what is wrong with him. He's always like, you know, so we, we recorded an album. Was it two weeks ago? 
and it was super fun recording. We just had a great time, and uh, it was really relaxing. And I listened back. I mean, I played really good. I listened back, and I dug in a lot. But at times, I would just lighten up a little bit, and my notes would be buried. Yeah, you got to dig in with your pick and be consistent and fierce and on that beat. My timing was good. My chords were good. My, you know, tone was pretty good. But I wasn't digging in hard on everything. So that's my challenge. And uh, maybe some of you can relate. No, yeah, yeah, right. You play, you try to be polite. You know, I try not to be, I try to walk lightly. You know, I, I, my poor wife has to listen to all this, these students and uh, my, me and uh, especially me. And then we have band, band practice or recording or jam sessions in the house. So she, she, she lets me live here. <laughs> so I try not to be totally obnoxious, but, but that sounded pretty, you know, solid. I wasn't getting a bunch of light or dead notes, you know. That's a good chord, though. We've done this today, like, you know, C, and then C7. Pick, attack, add too much. No, nah, you know, it, I use a pick all the time, really. D7, and then E7. That's a cool chord. Man, that's a cool way. So what we're doing, if you're just joining us, we're doing E, A, D, G. Yeah, pick attack is what I really need for even that. I'll lighten up. But for what I do with surf zombies, it's with a pick. All right. I'm back to this. We're doing some finger picking. Uh, I'm using the C chord. I'm going to go E, A, D, G chords. So we have, in case you're joining us, it's E, A, D, G. We're going like. And all kinds of stuff like this. That's doable. You can, you know, these chords. E7, the root, you got to know the root. Root is the seventh fret on the fifth string. And then I go to A, 12th fret, D, fifth fret, G, 10th fret, E. All from one shape. So that's. Really, it's not going to get any easier than this. Really, there's, that's all I do on this channel is find the easiest thing to play that's playable because that's about all I can manage, man. So <laughs> I, I can't remember much. So I just got to remember these simple, simple things. All right, making sure everybody's with me. It's a C chord. Pinky goes to third string, uh, third fret. Take that up one fret. You got C sharp, one more fret. D, you're going to need that. One more fret. D sharp, one more fret. E, you're going to need that. One more fret. F, one more fret. F sharp, one more fret. G, you're going to need that. One more fret. G sharp, one more fret. A, we're going to need that. So you got E7, A7. D7, G7. And I'm just doing the roll, thumb, index, middle, ring. And uh, like. So I was trying to keep that, you know, it's, let me grab some drumsticks. I was trying to go like, if we we're doing drum lessons, it would be like uh, oop, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a with metronome. Only I'm picking notes. One, 
one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five. Yeah. Cool. Only with my hands. Gary in the UK. How cool, man. What a great place. I want to come see you. top man yeah it is like chet atkins like kind of only now from there you could maybe get some that's pretty straight which is cool you know just like drilling uh, you know sit there playing a drum roll for two minutes i guess it could be some of the stuff could be boring to some people i suppose but uh, i'm willing to work through any as much as i can i enjoy doing the simple drills so and then to make it more like chet atkins you kind of do the kind of make it a little more uh, you know groovy doing the alternating bass you could slide into it down from uh, G to E, like E, A, D, G. stuff with that that's a cool you know again what are we doing check i'll check wow thanks man dude yeah man that's all i do is make these videos it's i'm kind of obsessed so <laughs> oh my god it's so fun so these this live stream this is the best live stream i've ever had i was i got this telecaster man and uh I bought this a long time ago, sold it to a student, and he uh, gifted it to me yesterday on guitar, inter or international, international Guitar Day or whatever it is. I've been kind of bugging him to buy it back, and I really miss this guitar. It was featured on uh, one of my videos that got um, like 112,000 views, which is my top video. Really helped my channel get going a little bit, so... Uh, he gifted this to me yesterday. I'm just like, and so I was thinking, well, what if I put it in my JCM 800, which is a killer little amp. And then I, I saw my memory man delay. Yeah. He's still playing. He's got about 40 guitars in his house. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I saw this uh, memory man sitting on my shelf, which was one of the greatest delays ever. Maybe I'll screw around with that. And I thought, man, then I was watching some Jeff Beck, live at the Iridium, doing the Les Paul Rock and Roll Party. Listened to that for last week on Endless Repeat. And then I watched some videos. He's Sure enough, he's using a telly, and he's using some of these <coughs> chords. And uh, he's doing some, <coughs> you know, crazy rolls. Or, <coughs> he's just rocking it. And using that slap back on a few songs. Let's let's play with the delay and make a longer delay. So these are fast delays. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to go. That's the, the delay set at like 12 o'clock. I'm going to go over to the longest delay it has. And I'm going to add more feedback. Check it out. Usually it makes endless uh, feedback. Whoa, something's different. Wow, it changed. Well, I might have to give that to my uh, repair guy, but here's a longer delay. A lot of noise coming through it. Well, that's not working the way I thought it would, so I'm going to get rid of the delay. That's a disappointment. Oh, my gosh. You checked out our catalog. Wow. Yeah, we're working on our seventh album now, Gary. And uh, the new one's going to be really good. The other guys stepped up and wrote a whole bunch of new songs. that, And they're playing. I'm having a hard time keeping up with uh, my bandmates. They're, they're in their 30s. I'm 61. And these guys are kicking my ass, man. No, the delay doesn't really bug me, really. I, I'm pretty used to it. I just kind of dig in and. Wow, thanks for checking out that Our Yeah, did you find us on Spotify or something? Uh, we've got, uh, how many, seven albums that should be online. You can probably find them on Apple Music, uh, Napster. Uh, really, there's, it's on dozens of platforms, uh, YouTube, and uh, what else? And you can buy our stuff off Bandcamp or... You can download our stuff or just stream it, whatever. Or we can send you a CD or LP. LPs, we don't have any tapes, and I'm out of coffee. Kind of. Uh, I'm just rambling, man. So. <laughs> those are cool, man. I always love those. That um, three, two, zero. Pull off. First string, second string. I got weird fingering, pinky and middle. What? Look at those little fingers. Those are tater tots, man. So, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think hand size has that much to do with it. I mean, long, it'd be nice to have long, graceful, beautiful fingers, but I just got these little, you know, gardening hands, but little tiny toddler hands you know this is kind of like crazy territory it's kind of uncharted it sounds bl blistering and blinding when somebody plays it with confidence but if you don't know what you're doing yeah it could be it could still be okay <laughs> So I'm just doing first, second, and third strings. I wonder if you can reverse it. Maybe. I mean, it's, what key is that in? It's kind of a mess. It's in what key you make it in. Really takes the fun out of it with no um, delay. So for dexterity, thanks for for the compliment. Is your name Rip? Rip seven seven eight six.
As far as dexterity, you know, I really worked on those scales for a long time. Scales can be kind of, uh, I think they're neat. I mean, but, uh, you know, I watch students reaction. They're just kind of like, oh, yeah, I did it once. Uh, now what are we doing? I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably want to hit it more than once, I guess. You can kind of emphasize different uh, O-R-L-P. Gotcha, man. Robert? Robert Lane Peterson. <laughs> Ron Lee Payne. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You can like emphasize different intervals. <laughs> There's groups of two notes. Which can sound weird within that scale. part of the scale. And they might, you know, I just found a chord in the scale. That, that's like a D7 because it's a C and an F sharp. D7 is made of Ds, As, Cs, and F sharps. Like... So within that scale, you can think of chord progression. So it's not just, you know, like running up and down the stairs for no reason. You know, we you can get something out of that. There was more notes like a D7 to a G major, the F sharp and C to the B and G. Well, it's all right. It's all right. have a book. I mean, oh my gosh, Jeff Lynn's and uh, Bob Dylan are still with us. Um, yeah, that was so cool. Um, yeah, I've got a book. I wonder if I can find one. Yeah. Oh, reaching. Ah, there we go. It's called, <laughs> it's about chords. It's about guitar chords. It's called 
guitar chords. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's my. Is are the letters reversed to you guys, or is it, is it normal? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. The first thing in the book is uh, something I call chord yoga, which I do on the uh, my channel a lot. This page here. Oh, good. I didn't want it to be reversed. See that E minor 7 to an A9 at the top? That's how I start people out on chords. Look at that guy. E minor 7 to A9. You go back and forth. Good, good, good. And then I go to like E minor to A2. E major to A minor. E7 to A minor 7. C to F major 7. Then down below I do D. D2. D. D suspended 4. And I can hook that over to the C2 and the G. I think these are like fundamental, the most, this kind of low stress chord work. So it's not so, you know, somebody breathing down your neck, telling you to hurry up. And, and this is more like, I'm, I'm begging people to slow down, slow down, slow down. So <laughs> I get kind of like super zen. I'm like, all right, man, let's just hear E minor seven. So that's, see how my middle finger is there? That's what it's about for beginning or reviewing or relaxing. And making sure your guitar sounds good. So the, the, the point is middle finger kind of works on second fret for a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to connect all these other chords like A9 and back. It's kind of like breathe in, breathe out. Just kind of chill out stuff. And, you know, versus punch or scrubbing or, you know, sweating or getting your hand tired. It's all like, ah, don't do that. Let's, <laughs> then you got E minor to A2. Same shape, which sounds kind of like, got us on the mountain top. Good. Then the summit of beauty and love. And Venus was your name. Wow. Cool. And that's that middle and ring, not index. Don't do that. Okay. That's, we're not doing that. We're doing these. Then you can make it major to minor. Same shape. But slow. Like this. Then dominant seven. You're welcome, Ben. And A minor seven. Yeah, this is from my guitar chords book, which you can order. I probably have a uh, link. I can send them out on uh, uh, from eBay. A link list on eBay, or just contact me. I'll get you one. You can email me at hooverguitar at yahoo.com. I also have free PDFs. Hoover guitar at yahoo.com free PDFs and, uh, or we can work on that. Uh, now what? Uh, oh, from there, e, E7 to A minor seven. Here's a C to F major seven. Those are not identical. That sounds like, well, the rain exploded with a mighty crash as we fell into the sun. And the first one said to the second one, Hope you have a fun. Um, yeah, C to F major seven for the band on the run. For the band on the run. For the band on the run. So I'm just trying to get the easiest thing possible. Yeah, wonderful, Ben. Yeah, that's that's the beautiful, those beautiful 70s songs, man. That's good times. That's the C to the F major seven. You just go back and forth. And then like the D's are, you know, uh, pretty simple and really those are important. Well. Wow. 
right, man. Testify. So I'm just going D, drop off the middle finger, that's D2. And then bring it back to D. And then you add your pinky on the first string. Third fret. Did I send you a, 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 a pick? Jabela. <laughs> cool. And then you can hop that over to a, a C2. I'll show you a picture of C2. Which jumps over to G. So those two chords. hop that over to a D on those three chords your ring finger never picks up on all those chords you can also do an E minor and a leaving that ring finger in place That is chord yoga found in my book, which somebody asked about. Uh, thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, what's it? Uh, looking for your name. I'm sorry. I can't even see. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm getting a lot of nice comments. They're very cool. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, you know, I think music, well, I've, I've uh, cleared my share of rooms. You know, I've had a lot of flop gigs that were really hard, you know, and maybe one, one drunk guy stayed through the whole gig when we got home or when, when we got done, he lifted his head up from the bar and go, you guys are great. Yeah. And goes back to sleep, you know, and we're driving. That's the one guy in the bar. We're driving home, you know, Hey, good gig, man. Yeah, see you tomorrow night. So, you know, I played a lot of tough gigs, and it just kind of makes you humble and uh, makes you kind of care. Yeah, crazy little thing like called Love. Like, that song gets pretty wild. I mean, the intro is cool. I, I remember I learned it when it was a new song. I was like, this is killing me, man. Uh, just to do the rhythm part. Something, you know, I could think my way through it. I think that's common. I mean, I wonder if I have a measuring device here. That, the, yeah, I probably do. Let's just see what we got for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. It is interesting. You know, people have talked about hand size with for years. I'm like, I don't know. Or, you know, should I buy a left-handed guitar? I don't, I suppose. Uh, well, what's going on here? Uh, awkward. <laughs> Thumb is at the end of the ruler. Pinky goes out here. Looks like it's like eight. 
a little over eight and a half for just stretch, you know, this way from the palm. Just to see. That's oops. Ah. But a little over seven from right down here. So I don't know, you know, index is like two and three quarters. Middle is three and a quarter. Ring is about uh, two and three quarters. Pinky is about two and a quarter. I don't know if that gives anybody a reference or, you know, at least. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh I don't know. Okay, so yeah. just goof in there. Um, yeah, and if you're interested in the cord book, it's, you know, you can just learn it from my channel. You don't have to order one, but uh, no biggie. So I was doing a little free explosion of blues licks there in G. There was a... It's like a there's a ninth chord which is like a two three two three G nine yeah thin necks are all right I like a medium neck so that's a B F A D B A F D. So you can do G blues. Now, if we put some timing into it, that wrecks everything. No, like, let's say I'm just chilling out. Shoot, 58 beats a minute. a little bit thicker than a, a few tellies I played. Um, I don't really know how to measure them very well as far as thickness this way, but width is probably normal. I don't really know. I'm lousy at measuring, but let's see what we got here. Ugh. It's like an... Wait. One and three quarters plus an eighth, <laughs> whatever that is, as far as width and then depth here. I don't know. I don't know. I can't see really. Um, cool, man. Yeah, got a lot of telly, telly guys here. Cool. So, yeah, I was just doing a little bluesy. I'm going to put that delay back on, but my delay is acting really weak today. I'm kind of concerned. So hooking a lick into a chord at least you're thinking about chord versus just a scale or kind of shredding, air shredding. I'm going to try that at uh, 64. That was kind of a mess. But that's okay, man. At least I'm trying to play in time. I'm thinking about my chord. Try it again. That landed a little better. Get the best notes to bend to get those great sounds. Yeah, yeah, man. 
the bends. Um, I have a, a trick question for my students. Well, it shouldn't be that tricky. I'm like, well, all right, show me the best bend or the most common bend in the key of, you want to name a key? You go ahead and name a key if you want that you like to play and I'll do it. I'll show you the, the bend I'm thinking. I love those squires. Key of A, good. All right, all right. So that's my question to a student. Like, you know, guys like, all right, man, what's the program about? What's Where are we going next, man? When are we going to start playing something good? I'm like, listen, Mr. Big Pants, uh, show me the best. <laughs> Calm down, man. No. I'll say, show me the most common key or the most common bend in the key of A for like rock and roll. And they're like, rock and roll, what's that? I'm like, get out of my house. No. <laughs> um. So what is the most common bend in the key of A? Anybody tell me? What string and what fret? E flat, I like it. That's pretty cool, man. E flat could be, but like what string are you on? The D, bending the D? Is that what you're saying? So we got two good answers here, actually. Yeah, bending the D. What what string are you thinking? This is this is good. I, this makes me happy. Okay, yeah, bending the D. Uh, and where's it going? From a D note to what? Just, just trying to be clear. You know, that's what's fun about music is you can be pretty precise with communication. When the world is uh, very weird and people are completely out of their minds, it's like, let's talk about music and use some terminology. So that D is going D to uh, B. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, maybe. Where's the B going? If you're going to bend a B, where, where's it bending to? So my, my concern is what is the target pitch? Is the B or the G string most commonly bent? Well, uh, I would. Meh. You're asking good question there, Ron. Hi, buddy. Um, those are the two strings I would pick for my most common bends, Ron. But I'm trying to get specific about. Okay, we're talking about the key of A, bending uh, the D. Usually go to a C and bend the d or 2d are you trying to what's your target pitch what if it lit up on a tuner what's it going to show that's kind of what i'm i'm fishing for uh an answer there you could bend c up to d that's going to sound pretty cool i'm going to demonstrate all this stuff all right i'll, I'll play kind of what i think here's here's my and this is the answer i'm fishing for not that if it was something else I, that sounded good i would say okay all right but you know, you got to kind of have it in your mind what pitch. Here's the um, the answer. That's the most common bend. A, C, D, C, D. Going up to uh, E. So on a tuner, let's just check my tuner and see uh, see what pitch I go to. And you should be able to, you know, uh, hello, kitty. <laughs> oh, she's climbing my leg. Right on, Ben. So that's the G string, seventh fret. Come on up here. Come on, mew, mew, mew. Come on. All right. That's that's my test question with students. Yeah, you can bend anything, right, right, right. Good. Glad you're with me. And then somebody said bending a C. With that C, you gotta be, you could go to D. 
or most like the flat three to a major third good or the four to a flat five cool but seven up to a root excellent cool i'm following you so you right on man b string bend the g up to an a good i like that that's a good one yeah oh my gosh good you guys are great way to go guys there's that second string eighth fret g bending up to an a the root exactly and then your third string i mean you know i can't see how people can't really know that if you've ever heard rock and roll in your life or blues i mean <laughs> oh good all right cool man you guys are really getting it g is rock yeah well yeah g leads to a i would say in when improvising like c a c leads to a and g leads to a Yeah, B works. Oh, you mean the B note. Okay, now, yeah, that's a good comment. Now, you said B. So the B is bending where to Sambongo, Dragon? Where's that B bending? What's the destination? Do you want a B note? Or do you want a B to bend up to a higher note? Which I think that they could both work. Uh, I'll show you what I'm... If you're saying bend a B, that wouldn't... B to C. Okay, that's cool, man. Ooh, good, tasty. Uh, a B to a C. Yeah. Do you know what degree of the, of the, an A scale that uh, C would be as far as, that's your target tone, your target pitch. Like, imagine a little target and you're like shooting arrows and you're going to hit the bullseye. And you're going to try to hit a C over an A minor chord, which is part of the chord. A minor is made of A, C, and E. So those are good targets, the root, fifth, or the third. So B to C, right, minor third right there. Okay, cool. So that is really good when you're bending. And then... Uh, you were talking about bending the C up to a C sharp to a major third. If you want to make it, brighten it up and make it major, cool. Uh, taking the B to C on the high E, yeah. Okay, okay. Or, or, man, I think they all sound cool. Gosh. You guys are, are really fun to talk to right now. Sometimes, you know, you're just, I've done these where I just feel like I'm jabbering to nobody. And it's like, I hope somebody. Uh, C to A again. Uh, C to A. To the rut. You guys are great, man. C D A. I understand that. How about C D E flat? talk about c to d yeah really good discussion you guys wow man you can, is the tuner helping to see oops that was a c sharp major so the fun thing about bending that c a little bit sharp you can be kind of between pitches. You can be kind of like 
almost making it to major, but just can't quite reach it, which is kind of a cool effect. Like, can't quite get up there to C sharp. 10, 15 p.m. in the UK. What do you got to do in the morning? Where are you going? I'm always interested in what people do for their career. If you, if you want to tell us, but it, yeah, I got this because, um, yeah, man, you guys are cool. I got this. My friend Ian recommended I get this because I, I do some guitar setups. So, yeah, those halves or quarter steps, you know, kind of like the notes between the note. It's kind of dirty and weird. So it's almost like, you know, if you bend everything, it's kind of, wait, 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 you know, kind of like, well, yeah, but what about... Kitty's going to barf. <laughs> Carpenter, man, I love that. To me, the carpenters, people that can build things are the rock stars. And also people that can fix cars. But if you can build stuff, man, I respect that so much. I respect anybody that what they can do. But that's fascinating to me. Have a good one tomorrow. The cool thing about a telly is you can bleed in. You can even make a note like this, you know. You got it, Gary, man. So you can you can bend an A up to a B and you have a ninth interval. Yeah, it's cool. You can hear that. With a little volume. Maybe I'll put a little gain on this just to be. be i think i'm gonna go outside and, and walk around a little bit or see if my wife needs any help but uh what a fun yeah 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 hi there hi there glenn well i've been on this for a, an hour and 44 minutes and whoa she's eating my book get off of there so i'm gonna say goodbye but uh wow what a fun day i'm really super hyped to see you guys so uh yeah, email me, hooverguitar at Yahoo, and I can, you know, send you some PDFs or we can chat or whatever. Cool, everybody. Take care. Take care easy. Happy Sunday. Thank you.